Today, we're making some French country vintage decor thrift flips. That's a mouthful. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first is going to be a plant stand. We're going to use some type of a sander. This is just my finger sander. Antiquing wax and a chippy brush, of course. I'm going to use some of this beautiful fabric. It's called Toile de Jouy very pretty and then this is a little bit of almost like a burlapy type texture and then this was thrifted it's a little plant stand it's got a big old crack in it so I had originally thought about refinishing it but we're just gonna cover it up instead so I'm gonna start off of course by giving this a little more of an aged or rustic look by going over all of my edges and corners with the sander. It's gonna take off some of that dark stain that's on there and just make it look like it's been used a bit more. So I'm just gonna go around all of these openings and there's little openings on each side. I don't know how old this is so I can't necessarily say that this particular stand is vintage, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that the other pieces we're using are vintage. And I like that the fabric print is a vintage theme. All right, so after you get done sanding all of it, you're gonna wipe it down. I just put just a spritz of water on a paper towel and I'm wiping all the dust away. I'm gonna allow that a little bit of time to dry. You can see where I've scuffed it up. Then we'll take the antiquing wax on a brush and you can add that on with the brush. And then there's also another way that you can put your wax on if you prefer, and that's to use a damp baby wipe. These are just water wipes, but I've used regular baby wipes and they work fine. The ones with the fragrance, you know, they work fine too. And I'm just going to rub that all over the wood. Now, when you use a damp baby wipe, the coverage is not going to be as dark. It's going to be a little bit lighter. So just know that when you use it. When you apply with a brush and you leave it on for longer, it's going to be darker coverage. You could just experiment and see which one you like best. You know, random bangs and bumps also will add additional aging and texture into your pieces to help sell the vintage look. Then I just kind of hit it with the dryer a little bit. Keep your dryer moving. Don't keep it in one spot, you know. You don't want to burn anything. And then once it's done, we're going to address the top of it. Now, no finishing was required for the top because we're going to cover this in fabric. I'm going to flip it over and decide how big of a piece I want to cut out of here. And I just want a, just a tiny bit of an overhang, just to allow me space if I need to move it to get it squared up on the top. So I'd rather have a little more that I could remove later than to cut it too short and waste the fabric, right? Because we're all about saving on this channel. We wanna stretch our dollar. We don't wanna be wasting. So now it's gonna fit and it'll have a little overhang and that's gonna be perfect. I'll take my Mod Podge, and since this is a plant stand and I'm going to use it as a plant stand, I'm going to choose a Mod Podge that is essentially waterproof. So like dishwasher safe or outdoor, something like that would be great for a project like this. I'm just adding it on top. I'll use my Mod Podge brush and then just try to get the coat even all the way across the top. Any excess can be put right back in the jar because this is clean. So we're going to put it right back in. And then I'm going to just give it a few minutes to get tacky and I'll put down my fabric right in the top of it. I'll use the brayer to roll over. This is going to get it nice and flat onto the surface and take any bubbles or potential wrinkling out. With this particular fabric, it is kind of a stiff fabric, so it's not going to really show any, any wrinkles or anything like that. And it's porous because it's got kind of an open weave. So it goes right through there. All right, so I'm just gonna start by adding Mod Podge. There's no particular way to put the Mod Podge on there. 
you see me doing it this way. I like to experiment with different ways of doing it to see what's going to be the best so I don't have excess, you know. But you can just pour a little bit into the cap and put it, uh, just dip the brush right into it. Or you can pour the Mod Podge onto a plate and then dip it across. However, however you want to do it is it's perfect. As long as it's got full coverage and it's not dripping because you do have to have quite a bit of time for this to dry. I did let mine dry overnight. It's like a 24 hour dry time and then you have to let it cure for several days. It's something like that, but just read your bottle, okay? I won't be using this anytime soon. I wanna be sure that it's going to be beautiful once we put the plants on it. So then I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of heat. Just, you know, give it a little start with the drying. And then to just show you how much, um, how big this is, it's about a, a nine inch square. Now all over this fabric, there are little seams and you can choose, you know, a certain seam that you like and cut that down and use that as your focal point if you would like. And if not, you can just put it down any way you want to on there. But I really like this, the ladies and the man is talking to them. Maybe they're having a little rest here from hard days farming, hard days work. So I'm going to just give a little snip, pull it off. This is just cotton fabric, so you can easily tear it. You know, tear your little straight line. And then I'll come over here and just roughly eyeball it, of course. You know how we do it. And then just tear that off. Pull your strings on the side and that'll give you a bit of a feathered look. It'll give you a rough edge. And I really like the look of that. So I'm gonna go with it. If you can't pull those off on your own, just grab some type of a weeding tool and grab the thread, you can clearly see it, and just pull those off. Gotta make sure that I get it, you know, kinda even on both sides. Now, once it is dry, ideally, mine's still a little damp, you're gonna cut off as much of the excess as you can. But there is a way to get that nice and um, clean on the edges, and we'll be looking at that in a little bit. So just stay tuned and I'll show you how to clean that up too. All right, so now our second layer of Mod Podge, and I'm going to put down my other piece. Now, you could probably do all this at one time instead of waiting in between for your layers to dry and then just give it extra time to dry. If that's the way you wanna do it, that is totally fine. Sometimes when I'm doing projects like these, they take me a few days. So I take it in steps and I try to do it in a timely manner so that I can get it all done to get the videos out. So you just choose the way that works best for you and how you craft in the time that you have. Now I'm going to put that somewhat centered, but not exactly, you know, you know, it's rustic, rustic, right? And then I'm gonna go over with the brayer and that's just gonna press the two layers of fabric together and the glue is kind of sandwiched in between and now on top and everything should be locked in together. Be sure when you do this that you wash your brayer off, of course, because then you're gonna have glue all over it. A little hot water should you know, and soap, little elbow grease should get that off. And then I'm just gonna use the back of the brayer, the little scraper side, to remove gently any excess that is across the top. Because with the thicker Mod Podge, if you leave lines in there, it will show in the end job. And I don't want that to show. I almost want this to look as though it was lacquered or hand painted on it. So I'm gonna make it as smooth as possible. I'm going downward on the edges so that the little rough pieces kind of stand out on the side they're flat but they look pretty and not messy and bunched up and then i'm just going to use my fingers to remove any excess glue from the edges okay now it's dry and you can see here that i still have a little bit of a rough edge not a problem i'm going to take a utility knife and go right around and trim that off Sometimes you look up if you have a sharp blade and it comes off in one piece. Sometimes you got to work with it a little bit, but it will work just fine. I'm pushing it away just a little bit and then slicing it off. And you can see that's much better. And go around and do this to all four of those sides. Y'all, it's rained so much here, there's mud everywhere, and we have more rain coming. But at least we know when the rain's coming, the so are the flowers. So I don't mind it so much when you look at it that way. It's actually a good thing, huh? Rain is a good thing. 
All right, so now I'm going to take my sanding block and go over and just kind of at an angle. I'm not trying to cut anything away. I'm just trying to smooth it out so that it's smooth against the wood. And when we put our wax on here, it is going to give us a beautifully manicured look. Beautifully manicured. I wish my nails were beautifully manicured right now. I had some artificial nails on or some gel tips for the cruise that we went on and they looked absolutely beautiful. But man, when I took those things off, my fingernails are trash. They're terrible right now. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little dauber add a little antique wax and the line or the edge between the fabric and the wood are now going to be blended away with that beautiful miraculous wax that i love so much it's going to blend the edges it's going to give it a see how crisp the edge looks so nice it is really going to finish the look of the edge off here you won't see any little frayed pieces or uneven pieces if you happen to cut it and you know get a little snag in there and you don't cut it so straight you're not even going to notice it this is going to blend it in very well look at the difference i love it you can also take the same one not using a lot of wax though and round out your corners if you want to because you know that's where that's where the aging happens right i'm also going to go down the edge because before that was all covered with the it was covered with the fabric that we just removed, right? So this didn't really get any wax on it. So now you can go back and you can go over all of your edges again and darken it if you would like, or, you know, even anything out that you need to. So now we're gonna age the fabric part. I am going to go down the little burlap pieces right there and it catches right off the edge of the brush bristles and it just really makes the center of the frame pop. You can really see the toile looks so pretty. And y'all got to keep in mind, I'm probably saying toile de joie wrong, but I'm a Southern girl and French is not even a language I'm familiar, you know, much with, but I think I'm saying it right. There are, this actually came from the thrift store, but I've actually got another piece that's yellow and blue that we're going to be using also for summer. So, if you like French country, French farmhouse, vintage mixed into it, a little rustic mixed into it, just uniquely your own, hit that subscribe button because we're going to have some more. Then I just ran that really dry brush across the top to go ahead and make it look as aged as the rest. This is the end result of the beautiful piece. Now I've got it at an angle here so you can get a better look at what's going on with the top and all of that work that we did on the top of the piece. And then underneath, you can use this as a riser or you can use it as a plant stand. Like I said, it's my plant stand so it will be used as that. But if you would like to use it with some candles or a small jewelry box, something pretty, go ahead and do it. The next will be a framed print with that fabric. This is a thrifted piece that I snatched up right when I saw it at Goodwill and this was a recent find. Love it. Didn't have a backing on it but that's okay. We're gonna fix it. I love the aging that is already on here. We're just gonna deepen it up to protect it. I'm gonna take another piece of that lovely fabric and choose a scene that I would like to be in the picture frame. So I've got a piece of cardboard that is the same size as the back. I went ahead and pre-cut it. And I'm going to choose a seam that I like, putting the fabric where there's a little excess so that we can fold it over. And I've chosen the picture of the people under the tree, getting a little work done. So I'm gonna flip it over. You can just use a glue stick. You don't even have to use hot glue on here if you would like and put it on the back. If you're using fabric though, you need to be sure you go kind of thick with it so that you can press it into the fabric. I'm just gonna smooth it into there. Once that dries, it is going to be clear. You won't see any purple. That's just a guide to show you where you have put your piece down. You know where your glue's at. And put that side, flip it up. 
You can also trim it off if you want to. You can also trim down your edges. You could also use hot glue on this if you wanted to do that. It's totally up to you. This way we're not gluing anything down to the fabric and we don't have to paint that piece of cardboard. Now I'm gonna just take a big soft brush and clean it. And on the bottom, there's almost like a felted or old cardboard something down there. So I'm just scraping all of that away. Just gonna clean every bit of that up. Now we're down to the resin or the wood that's underneath here. I think it's wood. I'm not entirely sure. Sounds like wood when you knock on it. Okay, so now I'll take a little tiny bit of the remaining wax and go over here. Now I'm, the wax is going to help preserve the aging that is already on there. It is going to also deepen that lightish kind of a bluish tone green up just a tad so it matches a bit better to what we have going on in the other pieces with the, um, the darker or the richer colors. So here this is and then I put a piece of that same white looking burlap stuff on there and cut it off. I just hot glued it on. I'm sorry that piece is not in there. Just You can see the hot glue line on the back. And that's what we used on the back to cover it up. It's gonna fit in there great. So now that I know everything's in place, I'm gonna take my glue gun and just seal it off with a bead of glue all the way around the edges. This glue is partly on the frame and it is partly on the backing and this is going to hold it together. It's very lightweight and it works. So if you can leave it that way if you would like, but to give it a little additional aging, I'm going to take again a chippy brush. This is a little bit smaller. I'm going to gently brush over the top. We don't want it to look muddy, but I do want it to look like it has already had a previous life. I'll go a little heavier around the edges where dust would naturally collect, right? and kind of round out my corners. You can see me doing that here. Rounding those corners out a bit. Back and forth. Now I'm really not using a lot here. You can see I'm not even dipping back into it. I'm gonna get into the corners really well, making sure that I've gone back and forth and side to side also across the print. And then any additional places I need to add the wax, I'll go ahead and add that in as well. And what a beautiful, easy project to do because this frame was already lovely. You know, it didn't even need any work. It could have been fine just the way it was or even putting a mirror in the back would have been beautiful too. This is how this little quick piece is going to look. It's gonna be great with that other piece if you like to make pieces that will match. I think it's very pretty. be nice sitting on a dresser in the bedroom I think. The next is going to be our wine bottle. So this is a wine bottle that I have. It is amber glass and it actually had homemade wine in it that had expired so it was emptied out. You can see the little rubber seal is aged and breaking away. I'm gonna take scraps of those same fabrics the Mod Podge. And then if you would like to age it, you can grab your antiquing wax and a brush for that. I'll take the lighter color patch and it is a little bit too big. I don't want it to round up. I want it to sit on the flat part of the bottle. So I'll just give it a snip and tear it to get that rough edge. And then with my fingers, pull that edge down and any fabric that needs to come away or any threads that need to come away, I'll take them down. I'm going to lay this on a silicone mat and because it rolls I need to support it and I can do that by putting something underneath the edge on the silicone mat to keep it where it is facing the right direction. So the size is great now and now we'll work on the next little scenery that's going to go right on top. I want to say a quick thank you to those who are members of the channel. You are helping me with your contributions to give free content for everybody else. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it and I appreciate the patience that you show me the months when it's a little bit slow. All right, 
So we're going to layer it and I'm going to do the same thing as we did on the plant stand. And I'm going to pull away the edges here. Pull them away and get that ready to go down right on the top. Everything matches. Everything is going to be beautifully done. Right? Easy, easy, easy. I'm going to go back with that Mod Podge and I'm going to add a layer on here. Only on the areas where I know we're going to put the fabric. If you get in a spot where you get more than you need and you exceed the edges of where your fabric is, just take a damp cloth and quickly wipe that away before it has the chance to stay on the bottle. And the reason I say that is because you want your bottle to be shiny and look like an aged wine bottle. So you don't want to have those mm, kind of those areas where it doesn't look nice and shiny and flat, right? Okay, now I'm going to go on top of the fabric here, but I am not going to brush over the frayed edges. I want those to continue to be soft and frayed, so I'll go up to it and all next to it, but I will not cover those nice soft edges up. If you want to glue yours down, you can certainly do that. But I like the idea of having a little movement here and having that additional texture. So, I put the glue down first, or the Mod Podge first, then the fabric, right? And now I'm going back over it, only on the solid pieces, to hold that in place. Now we're going to hold it still again, so I can somewhat center this piece on top of the other piece. I'm going to try to get that straight, and it's a little bit crooked, but don't worry, I do adjust it, because it's wet. And I notice that while it's still wet, I can easily adjust it. I just kind of slide it up on one side and hold the other side in place. And it will be as even as I can possibly get it with my eyeballs, right? Now this one, I'm going to go over the entire thing, even the little frayed edges. But the edges, I'm going to try to brush in the right direction. Now see, I'm cleaning the bottle with a baby wipe and just getting off all of that. Because if you leave it, it's going to not be shiny and flat. It's going to have like areas that look like they're dirty, like they clearly don't belong. Once I've gotten that together, all those are sandwiched together with the Mod Podge, I'm going to go over it with my heat. And then I'm going to take strips of fabric and of the fabric that was beneath it. And we're going to make a little top or the side. If you're enjoying this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up because it lets me know to keep doing the work that I am doing. I always want to show you what you would like to see. If you are new here or if you've watched in the past but you aren't subscribed, it, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe because I am working on a goal of 100,000 by the 31st of October and I would love for you to be part of that number so we can party together on Halloween. Thank you so much for the consideration and for stopping by today. Now, we're going to go right through the wire part here, right through the wire part, and I'm just going to tie it on the top, no bow or anything. I've got three pieces of the beautiful toile, and I have two pieces of the other, which makes a total of five, and this is about nine inches of fabric. This is just my little extra something. You know, it's sitting in a shop, and it's ready to be sold, and... It's beautiful and it's a little flashy, but still doesn't take away from the fact that we want it to be a vintage looking piece, right? We don't want to take away from that. If you want to use it for a candle holder, because that rubber's still in there, you can just put a candle right in the top. How about that? Only a flameless candle though. You don't want to set anything on fire. But I'm going to close mine up and use it as is. Lovely. Here's that bottle, and I think it's really pretty. It's different, for sure, but a very pretty piece. This would look really nice in a kitchen, I think, or maybe a dining room, maybe in your prize china cabinet. If you enjoyed the video, there's a rectangle right here. Click on that, and you can see even more of my videos. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon. Bye.